is Kiki. I am a personal trainer. I'm also a strength and conditioning coach. I'm an author and I'm the co-founder of Eat More to Weigh Less. I'm also a trainer's trainer, which basically means that many of my clients are trainers or aspiring trainers. So Eat More to Weigh Less is actually uh, what the topic that we're talking about today is based on something that I was just in the My Fitness Pal, uh, my news feed, because Eat More to Weigh Less actually started over on My Fitness Pal. So a uh, fun fact, we have been one of the top, uh, we've been in the top 10 groups on My Fitness Pal for over five years now. There's probably about 20 to 30,000 ish uh, members of that group there, which is where we started. And now there's a full website and things like that. So if you're ever looking for like-minded eaters, you can always check over there. But today's topic actually came from when I was looking through my own feed because I happen to still look through my wall and see what everybody's doing and check in on you guys. And there was a concern that someone else had. And basically they were saying like, I can't believe how few calories I burn anymore. You know, they used to burn 1500 and now they were only burning like 300 or something like that. And so I see that a lot in the feed. I see either a lot of people who are logging uh, calorie burns, sometimes like a thousand calories, 1500 calories, you know, even 800 calories. And some of these calorie burns are extremely high. And I know that that is what a lot of people shoot for. So sometimes people will pile on um, different types of exercises to be able to reach a higher burn. Uh, sometimes I know that burn really gets to us and we really want to increase the amount of calories that we're burning. So if you are, whether you're wearing like a heart rate monitor or you're looking at maybe the calories that are adding up on a cardio machine or something like that, a lot of times we don't really know what to shoot for, but we just assume that high is better. <laughs> like the higher that we can get it, the better. So one of the things that I would say first and foremost, if if you're really, really striving for high calorie burns and you want to know like how much should I be shooting for like you know you just you really want to just burn it out you want to get super super high burns and you're used to it or maybe you're not burning as much as you used to and you wonder if that's a problem I would say the true question would be can you eat enough to fuel that burn so what I mean by is so if a person is burning 1500 calories so like for instance uh, this person that was in the news feed, they, in my news feed, they were saying they were burning 1,500 calories before, and they were bummed that they only burned 300 during their workout. If you are only eating, say, 1,200 calories, which is what a lot of diets start people at, or my fitness pal, most people go on there and they select two calorie, I mean, two pounds per week loss, which puts them at the lowest possible calories, which is 1200. So if you're only eating 1200 calories, but you're burning 1500, that's putting you in the negative. Most people don't think that that's a problem, but it is. That's a huge problem. You don't want to be in the negative. Now, even if you're trying to, for instance, you get to the like 3,500 calories burned for a pound of weight loss or what have you, if that's your goal, you have to understand that, yes, it's extremely dangerous being in the negative calories. That's That should not be your goal. So if you are burning 1,500 calories and only eating 1,200, right off the bat, that puts you in a 300 calorie like negative. But you're actually burning so much more than even 1,500 because you were burning calories before you even did the workout. We all have a basal metabolic rate, which is the like base amount of calories that you need just to lay in bed all day and breathe. So if the amount of calories that you need just to lay in bed and breathe are you know, 1,300, 1,400, 1,600 calories, some people even 1,800 is their, their base level calories. If that's the amount that you need just to lay in bed and breathe, but you're burning 1500, so say 1800 is your BMR, which is your base, and you're burning 1500 on top of what you should have had for your base calories, that 1500 should have been added to it. So if your base was 1800 and then you burn 1500, 
your the amount that you actually need that day is 1500 plus 1800 so if you're only eating 1200 that's putting you so far into the negative that everything's just shutting down so shooting for super high calorie burns high isn't better especially if you're dieting because if you're dieting you already have a caloric deficit you've already reduced how many calories you're taking in and if you're like most people who you're taking in too few calories like if you're doing my fitness pal 1200 calories or whatever diet plan that has you on 1200 calories then once you start burning more calories the damage that you're doing to your metabolism starts so quickly so you're you know four weeks into that you're already seeing metabolic damage eight weeks into that you're seeing even more metabolic damage so really stressing about how much you're burning like that that's not the question the question is can you eat enough to fuel the burns it's very important to understand that the more active you are the more food that you need because again most diets aren't even giving you enough for that base level the like coma level calories so when you start working out you're adding to the amount of calories that your body needs if you don't eat to refuel that then your body starts shutting things down so if you don't want to eat that much so say like if you're the person that had the 1800 plus 1500 burn then you have to remember that if you don't want to eat upward of 2300 2500 3000 calories then you need to work out less that's the only way to reduce the amount of food that your body requires is to move even less moving more means that you need to be eating more so it's just something to remember when it comes down to it is that you, <laughs> yes eat all the food you need to if you're going to increase activity you need to increase the intake so even though that sounds confusing and most people think dieting they think you know eat less and move more that's not what you want to do you want to eat less and work out less or eat more and work out more that should be your philosophy not doing opposites because doing opposites is what's going to crash your metabolism so it's very important to ask yourself can you eat enough for those burns if you're shooting to burn 500 a thousand 1500 calories in one workout are you eating are you willing to eat that much food on top of what your body needs to just lay in bed and breathe if you're not then don't worry about getting that high of a calorie burn you don't need to get that high of a calorie burn a two or three hundred calorie burn would have been just as efficient now the other thing to keep in mind is the fact that if you are doing if you're lifting weight or you're doing like hit type workouts those numbers are going to be deceiving anyway so you may actually be burning more than you think so this there's two there's two sides to that coin one you want to make sure that you're eating enough to fuel the workouts but two you want to understand the fact that those numbers you can't really count on them anyways they're deceiving so if you're just chasing a super high number you're going to often forgo the workouts that will actually help you and build your metabolism and help you to lose fat because you're going to be going for the workouts that are giving the higher burn which is typically going to be your cardio based workouts or workouts where you're moving non-stop that's going to show you a higher burn on your heart rate monitor but uh, we've talked about this before with cardio burns what you see is what you get on the heart rate monitor so the burn that you see right then during the workout that's it but with lifting or with hit there's an afterburn factor so you're not only burning what you see on the heart rate monitor but you're burning more calories all day long so you can't always tell how much you're actually burning just by looking at your heart rate monitor some of the newer devices now like the body media fit and even some of the newer fitbits the one that use your heart rate can do a little bit better job of figuring that in but again you have to keep in mind the the first part of that equation too because i see people with fitbits too that are um they're burning the Fitbit will show them that they're burning 2800 calories 3000 calories but yet they still want to toss all caution to the wind and only eat 1200 calories so you have to pay attention to if you're gonna look at the burn then pay attention and make sure you eat enough to sustain it 
I suggest not getting too caught up in the burn unless you're monitoring your heart rate for other reasons, like you have hypothyroid or you have adrenal fatigue and you're trying to make sure that you're doing, that you're focusing on more rest-based training and you're trying to focus on making sure that you allow your heart rate recovery to be sufficient enough that you're not suffering from adrenal fatigue. So other than that, you want to try not to get so wrapped up in the numbers that you're discouraged if your burn is super low or that you're under eating when your burn is super high. So uh, do you think the Fitbit picks up all the afterburn calories? The, the newer ones are doing better. Fitbit used to be the worst. Body Media Fit um, was the one that I would recommend back in the day a lot, but the newer Fitbits are doing better. But a lot of these, we just have to remember, they're just glorified pedometers, so they're they're monitoring our movement. Hey, Nellie, they're monitoring our movement, but they're not, you know, they're they're not always catching the things that aren't associated with like the body part that they're attached to. You know what I mean? So if it's like on your arm, but you're moving your legs, or vice versa, sometimes it's only monitoring like when you're walking around the gym, but not necessarily what's happening when you're um, when you're lifting the weight and stuff. So the ones that incorporate both that have like the pedometer with the heart rate um, kind of combined those are going to do a little bit better job but you don't always see the afterburn so like I said if it's a newer ish one it's, it's going to give you a, a better judgment what's the best way to calculate the calorie burn to ensure that you're eating enough so if you are if you have like the like Fitbit uh, body media fit. I don't. I think. I just, I think body media fit. Are they like doing away with that now? Or body bug? Whatever. Those do a very very good job of letting you know pretty much your base calories without even working out. So what I used to recommend for my clients with Fitbit and still do a lot of times is if you have Fitbit, then pretty much eat what the Fitbit gives you because your workout is going to uh, introduce a deficit, and typically it's going to be enough of a deficit. So if you're eating the amount that the Fitbit is showing you, then that does a pretty good job. Uh, a lot of the, everything is really estimation. So that's why you, you can't be too careful with making sure that you don't under eat because if you are eating in a way that sustains your muscle mass and allow, or allows you to build more, then you're increasing your metabolism. But if you're not eating in that way, then you actually end up suffering. So a lot of these estimates still work. The Fitbit works if you're eating at what Fitbit gives you and then allowing your exercise to be the deficit instead of adding, a, I don't recommend adding a deficit on top of whatever Fitbit gave you because typically it didn't really include your workout calories, especially if you're lifting. Same thing goes for like my fitness pal. It's, it's fairly accurate for the person who punches in like lose 0.5 pounds and doesn't underestimate their activity level. It, it does a fairly good job. But most people, what happens is A, they either pick two pounds lost, um, which is going to make the calories ridiculously low, or they don't eat back the calories, which the way that my fitness pal is set up, it's set up for you to eat back the calories. It, the deficit's already included. So if you have it set to the deficit and then you're always trying to make sure that you have these calories left over at the end of the day, you're adding a deficit on top of your deficit, if that makes sense. So all of these ways of estimating help, it's just a matter of making sure that you're not undercutting yourself and the more active that you are increasing it. So any of like the weight loss calculators that we have on the website at uh, eatmortoweightless.com, the calculator that we have on there, same thing. It will give you a really, really good estimate based on the amount of times that you're working out per week. And we have it set up so that you put in like the total amount of hours that you're working out per week. So if you are working out just like one to three hours per week, it'll put you at one level. If you're working out three to five hours a week, it'll set you at another level. So that's going to also give you a pretty good estimate based on the amount of working out that you think you do. And you'll notice that the more you're working out, the higher calorie level it gives you. So it's really, really important. Like that's the biggest takeaway if you get nothing else <laughs> from this conversation is that you must eat enough to fuel the burn. The more active you are, if you're... A trainer that like you maybe you train when you train your clients and then you have your own session or you're doing two a days or something like that you need more food than the average person if you're an athlete you need more food than the average person if you are a like group instructor and you're teaching multiple classes a day you're gonna need more like you can't eat at diet level calories 
So that's the most important thing is making sure that you're fueling the burn because not only does your body need it and it's going to affect your metabolism, but also it's going to affect your performance. And uh, most of us don't realize when we're performing in an undernourished state, we just think that that's the way the workout feels. But when you are properly fueled for a workout, you're going to get more out of it. So it, it's definitely something that you want to make sure that you're doing. Just saying like, well, I don't need that much because I want to, you know, burn more doesn't really help you in the long run. What do you think about intermittent fasting? It does work very, very well for some people. A lot of the people that are part of the over dieted population, which is who my message is specifically for. Many of them do not do well with intermittent fasting. There's so much information about that out there about how great intermittent fasting is, but there's like this underground community of people that typically end up coming to me and they're like, something's wrong with me. I don't understand. I'm like, I, I try fasting and it didn't work for me. And some of the things that uh, I discuss is just making sure, like paying attention to how you feel and knowing that a lot of the things that a lot of people pass off as normal when you are fasting aren't necessarily for someone who is susceptible to like adrenal fatigue or hypothyroid or pre-diabetic things like that because it can really enhance those things fasting is not for everybody if you have a if you're completely healthy and you have a you know spectacular metabolism and you know it, it works great for a lot of people uh, doing cardio with Fitbit is fine cardio Fitbit actually tracks cardio very well so if you're doing mainly cardio, then you'll find that your Fitbit is going to give you pretty darn accurate um, calorie count. It doesn't always do as well with lifting. Like I said, the very, very um, newer ones are a little bit better. Do you still eat all the calories that it gives you? If you're doing only cardio, then you can take your deficit from what Fitbit gives you. So if Fitbit is telling you that you're burning 2,500, then you can eat, you know, 2,200 and you'll be fine. So, but if you're lifting, then on those days you would want to eat probably close to exactly what Fitbit is telling you because you're going to get enough of a burn and afterburn from your lifting. So your calorie count on lifting days are, yeah, yeah, so that's that's exactly what I'm saying. So that's what a lot of people find. So depending on which Fitbit you have, but the majority of people that have Fitbit, they do notice that. That's why they kind of get confused because they're like, okay, the calculator on the website says to do it this way. You know, it tells me to eat this much, but Fitbit's only telling me that I'm eating this much. So it's just important to know that the Fitbit isn't grabbing all of those workout calories from your lifting days. It does it does fairly well on cardio days. You can probably take it close to face value, but on your lifting days, you know, it's not it's not it's, it's going to track like you moving around. It's going to track like the actual movement, not what's happening with the calories. So like if you're doing a circuit type lifting workout, then you'll notice that the calorie burn is a little bit higher. But if you're doing, um, you know, like strength based lifting where you like lift and you're resting for like one to three minutes, it's going to show a super low burn. It's, it's a lot like how your heart rate monitor does with lifting. So it's the same way. Um, and there's another, there's a scope on the website about that too, about how heart rate monitors are inaccurate for lifting. And that's, a pretty big deal because most people same thing like if you're chasing that number it's, it's that's really confusing for you because you're like well obviously this workout is way better because look how many calories I burn but you know it's just a little tricky because it's not true because it's not figuring in the afterburn so I hope that answers that question like I said it wasn't necessarily a question specifically it's just something that I noticed so so much in my fitness pal because I have such a huge friends list <laughs> on there so I don't always get to comment on everybody's thing but I do I kind of go through and I see what everybody's doing and I know a lot of people have the eat more weight less information but then I see them doing other things that are kind of contrary I see them yes Nally focus on the changes like look in the mirror take some pictures and accept the goodness that is happening. So I look around a lot on my fitness pal and I kind of notice that I can I can see the people that are being consistent 
and they're, they're getting results. I can see the people that are periodizing their nutrition and their workouts, and I see that they're getting results. I can see the people that are jumping from plan to plan to plan to plan to plan to plan, and like just kind of like they don't really know what's going on. Um, and I see the people that like they go for a while of lifting and then they kind of get discouraged and then they start like doing cardio because it's giving them like 1200 calorie burns. Uh, I missed that question about BMR. If you want to repost it, sorry that I missed it, but I was right in my mouth. So that's why I want to bring that to attention because I see, you know, I see the struggle and I see these people, you know, because it's been years. So I've been watching so many of you guys for years and I see the struggle with like, I really want to get this weight off right now. So let me go burn 1200 calories a day and eat 900. And a year later, two years later, three years later, five years later for some of you guys, like you're still sitting in that place. So I really, really want to clarify that because I don't want you guys to keep spinning your wheels. I don't want you to keep chasing the numbers. I don't want you to think that more is better when it comes to exercising or that less is more when it comes to calories. Like you want to be almost as close to like maintenance as possible. The further you get from maintenance, the more issues that usually arise. So a lot of times if you're just, if you're eating at maintenance level calories and then you add in the workouts, there's your deficit. Like you don't even have to go crazy by slashing the calories and slashing the food. Like typically if you pick one, you're good. Uh, love to be active, love to eat. My question was eat BMR calories as well as your calories. Okay. So yes, you want to eat your, your BMR calories are like, non-negotiable that you cannot you can't tinker with it so when we talk about lowering calories you're we're talking about your BMR plus all the calories that you're burning throughout the day so BMR is base level like you you need that to survive period once you get out of bed and start brushing your teeth in the morning you're burning more than BMR so as you're moving around you're like you're burning calories burning calories so then you have your what's called your TDEE, which is your maintenance level calories. So that's base level, like comatose state calories, plus all the activity that you did during the day. So when we talk about reducing calories, what a lot of people don't understand is we're talking about from this number. But a lot of people start reducing from this number or they go like way below here. When you had a lot of room right here. So you're starting here and you just want to just slightly less. That's all. That's all it really takes. Um, most of us don't. We can't tell the why is eating more or at least eating enough so scary. It's scary because most of us aren't, you know, we're not teenagers anymore. Most of us aren't 20 anymore. Most of us, you know, I mean like we're getting older and older and older and we've been fed for 10, 20, 30 years. The fact that eating less and moving more was the answer. And because of the fact that every time you did drop calories, you kind of, you saw a result, it just, it intensified that thought in your head. So the diet mentality, you just, it, it's like, I always say like, it was like a hit of crack that first time you get it and you're just like, oh, and it's never as good as the first time. And you're always chasing that high. And the first time that we slashed our calories, we saw results. And so we got addicted to that. And we thought that that was the reason why, but we never realized that we could have gotten the same result from reducing a teeny bit than slashing all of it. Uh, does eating more principle apply only if you're strength training? No, not, not the whole concept of eat more to weigh less. So the whole concept of eat more to weigh less is what I explained about the, the base level calories plus the everything else that you burn. You only need to reduce slightly to see a result. Most of us are used to reducing so much that we see this result and we think that it was because we did we slashed everything when we really only needed to slash a teeny bit. So that part applies to everybody. It really doesn't matter what type of workouts you're doing. So you would just, because it's based on your individual stats. So it's based on how much you are burning each day. You only want to remove just a slight bit from that. The reason why I clarify for the strength training is because people that are strength training, they start getting confused because there's no 
certainty in the numbers anymore. So when you were doing cardio, there was like the certainty in the numbers. It's like, a, or you felt like there was certainty. We think like the numbers give us comfort. So it's like we knew exactly how much we were burning. But then when we start lifting, like we don't know because everything's all over the place. So the the heart rate monitor is not showing us enough. So we just, we're, it's really confusing because we're like, I, I, don't, I don't know how much to eat anymore. So that's why I give the clarification for that. If you're doing cardio only, then your numbers are gonna be a little bit more useful to you. The only thing about doing cardio only is the fact that your body adapts to the cardio, so you eventually have to do more of it for it to keep working. So if, you're, if you start out and you're just like doing like a 10 minute run every day and you're getting results for that, as soon as your body adapts, then you have to do another 10 minutes and then another 10 minutes and then an hour and then you have to run, you know, three days a week instead of two and then four days a week and then, you know what I mean? So you have to keep adding on time. With strength training, it's it's better for your metabolism because of the fact that you're gonna build more muscle, which muscle is what's gonna help enhance your metabolism. Your, your metabolism is based on how much muscle mass you have. So that's the reason why I really, really encourage strength training. But we're all grown ups here and if you're not gonna do it, I can't make you. <laughs> so all I can do is recommend it highly recommend it but if you're choosing not to especially in the beginning which a lot of people do in the beginning it, it takes some of us a minute to kind of get into the whole strict training thing and if that's the case then you would still use the same concept you would just look at how much you actually are burning in a day and then you only need to reduce your calories by 10 to 15 percent of that instead of like 30 to 50 percent which is what a lot of us are used to so Hopefully that answered that question about the um, cardio. So no, you don't have to do strength training, but I really hope you do. I really, really hope you do because that is what is gonna catapult your results. And that's the difference between why diets worked in the past and why they don't work as well now is because of the lack of muscle mass. Got it, can't lie, I like the way my body looked doing more cardio. And most of us did. But the older you're getting, you're losing more muscle mass. So when you did more cardio, you probably had more muscle mass. But then that you start eating away at that muscle mass and even adding in more cardio won't help. So that's the problem is that we don't understand, we don't, not don't understand, but it's, it's hard for that realization to kick in that you're also, you're getting older, you're losing muscle mass. So even if you like the way that you looked, then that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll look like that now with a ton of cardio. So you like strength training, but you look husky. Okay, so here's the thing with um, with lifting, where when you're actually building muscle with lifting, and a lot of people like this confuses a lot of ladies too, because you know at first a lot of us are like, I'm not lifting because I don't want to get bulky, and then you hear all this stuff about like lifting doesn't make you bulky, so you're like, all right, cool, I'm I'm gonna get toned, so I'm gonna lift, and then you start lifting and you look bulky, and you're like. Seriously, you told me I wouldn't look bulky <laughs> if I lifted. Now, what happens is because of the fact that many of us, by the time we finally accept that we should have been lifting the whole time, we've started losing quite a bit of muscle mass and we've been gaining fat. So in the beginning, like your skin is like nice and tight, right? So it's, you have your skin and then you have like this muscle under here and then maybe like a little bit of layer of fat, but it's like, it's tight around everything. Now, every, every time you diet, what happens is you, you're losing some of that muscle, but you're gaining some fat. So then you lose a little bit more muscle and then you gain fat. You lose a little bit of muscle and you gain fat. So now you have like this space here that is fat. So whereas maybe the first time when you only had this much fat, you only had to lose that much and you would see the muscle. So you'd be all like tight and toned and like looking good, right? But when you gain back, some of that fat now for you to lose that same amount that you did before, you're, you're here, which was where you were when you started your fat loss the other times. And so you get to where you, could, you can't take any more and you're there and you're good and you're like, well, I guess that's good enough. And then you gain back a little bit more fat. So then when you go to lose some of it, you see what I'm saying? You see that, that airspace, like that, that's your fat and this is your muscle. So you have to go deeper every time before you even hit the muscle. But every time that space is getting bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where you have you have more fat than you have muscle. And at, this is the point where most of us finally realize like, man, dieting's not work because I diet, I get to like here and I still don't 
look good. Like, I don't get it. Why, why do I look like this? And I need to like, you know, keep dieting or whatever. And maybe you're back down to that original weight, but there's, there's hardly any muscle there. So there's just fat. Now, when we decide, okay, I get that. I want to rebuild my muscle because I want to look the way that I used to again. So now we're here, right? You got this extra fat here and you got this little bit of muscle here. When you start building, this muscle builds up and it pushes the fat layer outwards. So it seems like you got bigger, but it's only because right now that muscle is building up. Now the same muscle is going to help you to burn fat, but while you're building the muscle, because remember, if you've been working out for a long time, building muscle and burning fat are two different things. Contrary to what all the, you know, all the commercials and magazines and everything have had us to believe all these years of like, build fat and burn muscle, pick one. So when you start focusing on the building muscle, which most of us are doing it like a little late in the game, it's pushing that fat layer outwards. And this happens especially on the legs for a lot of ladies. You start building muscle and it seems like your legs are getting huge. You're like, are you kidding me? Same thing with your arms. It just starts, it starts expanding because you're building muscle under the layer of fat. You will get to a point where that will switch off. You'll burn off some of the fat, maybe like build a little muscle, burn a little fat, build a little muscle, burn a little fat, build a little muscle, burn a little fat. And that's how you cycle those phases to get back to here, to that compact look that you had. But remember, the less muscle that you have, it doesn't matter how much fat you lose, you're not seeing any of the muscle. So it, the only way to start seeing that muscle again is to start building it again. But you're, there's going to be that uncomfortable phase. You know, it's like when you like get a bad haircut or when you get a good haircut and you grow it out, like you go through that in-between phase where you're like, I just look crazy. Like, what do I do with this stuff? So it's like that. Or like when you're going, when you hit puberty and you know, you get that like awkward growth spurt. Like a lot of us see with our kids, like when some of like the boys, like they shoot up and then they're just like awkward for like a year or two because they're like, they got to get adjusted to that. So before they're actually, they're not boys, they're not men. Should you do cardio and weight training? If you like them both, do them both. So it's, it's not that you can't do cardio. It's just a matter of what your goals are. So it's really, really, really important for you to know what it is you're trying to accomplish when you're striving to, when you're working out. Like there's a difference between working out just for general health purposes, working out for fat loss, working out for muscle building, working out for maintaining muscle mass. Like there's a huge difference between how you work out for each thing. It's not just about just work out and whatever happens, happens. So it's just about it's about understanding both. So if your goal is fat loss and you haven't over dieted, you have a fairly healthy metabolism, you want to start incorporating weight training, but you love cardio. This is what, um, I guess Friday's scope was about. You can, you do both. You just, you want to add in some strength training though. So, because you want to make sure that you're letting your body know what you want to do. The, the thing to understand is that when you're doing two different types of workouts, your body's confused. So if you're trying to build strength, but you're doing a lot of endurance, your body's like, All right, like what do you want me to do? Do you, do you want more strength or do you want greater endurance? Same thing when you're trying to like build muscle and burn fat. It's, it's multitasking. And those of us who really know anything about multitasking, you know, even if you don't admit it, you're not really doing two things at once. You're doing one and then you switch it and you're doing the other. <laughs> so you're really like going, you're going back and forth between two things. You're not doing two things simultaneously. That's the same way you need to look at your fitness journey is just you alternate phases of uh, what you're what you're trying to accomplish. So you'll have a, a cycle of fat loss. You'll have a cycle of muscle gain. You have a cycle of strength. You have a cycle of endurance. You have a, a you know just these different cycles for what you're trying to accomplish, and it will change as time progresses. I hope that helps you guys. I know that the Q and A always kind of takes things in a different direction, but I love the questions because it lets me know exactly what you guys 
need help with so that I know because like I say because I've talked about them like you know once upon a time like three years ago I think like oh yeah I already shared that information but if you just found me yesterday that doesn't help you so I really like when you guys do hop on and stay for the Q&A because then I can answer the actual questions that you have so I don't know if that answered everything chat about cardio if I missed your question if you were if you're watching the replay and I didn't get to your question you can hop on any of our social media platforms or the website and ask a question where everywhere is either at eat more to weigh less or em2wl that's the number two in both of those and you'll either get me or one of the eat more to weigh less team members and we're more than happy to answer your question or point you in the direction of an article or video or whatever that has already been written on the subject so thank you i'm so glad that they help you so much and i think do you, are you on my fitness pal too? I, th I think you're on my friends list on my fitness pal, but I don't know, maybe not. Um, either way, if you were here wondering how many calories you should burn, it's gonna be different for everybody. You'll notice that I always ride the line on <laughs> issues. I very, I sit very comfortably in a gray area, so I will never usually give you like, yes or no, like this is all you can do. I'll give you the pros and cons. I'll help you to understand the why behind it. Because like I said, because I train trainers, that's typically what I'm used to doing is just going into a little bit more detail and not just giving like a blanket list of rules because everything is different for each individual. So it really takes knowing as many of these puzzle pieces as possible to know how they fit together for you. So I hope that helped you guys and I will talk to you guys later.